A girl named Sarah who's eagerly waiting for her 18th birthday, imprisoned by her father in a basement for almost 20 years. Her mentally sick father rapes her repeatedly, and she gives birth to three children alone in the basement. The movie begins with a glimpse of a man named Don rushing toward the hospital. Twenty years earlier, Don is enjoying a family dinner. Don is married to Irene and has two daughters, Amy and Sarah. Don is a psychopath who used to control the whole family. Amy lives in the hostel. She came home for spring break and had to leave the next morning. The younger daughter, Sarah, is a rebellious girl and wants her independence. Sarah had prepared for a party night with friends two weeks ago but was stopped by Dawn. She aggressively leaves the dinner table. Sarah is unable to accept the dominating nature of her father. She dreamed of running out of the house when she turned 18. Sarah walks from the back door of the house to the party with her boyfriend, Christopher, at midnight. They both enjoyed a ride on their motorcycles and reached the location of the bonfire camp party. Irene came to see her upset daughter, but Sarah couldn't open the door. Don interferes and opens the door with the master key. As they couldn't see Sarah in the room and realized that she ran out of the window. Don stays up the whole night to confront Sarah. After the party, Chris told Sarah about his feelings for her. They kissed each other. Chris plays the guitar and sings a song for her. The following morning, when Sarah returns home, Don screams at her. Don says she has to follow the rules to live in this house. Sarah is unable to tolerate his oppressive behavior and claims that she will sneak out one day. The argument is getting worse as her mother intervenes. Sarah goes to her room and imagines the beautiful moments between Chris and her. Amy arrives to inquire about the party before leaving for the dorm. Sarah told her sister about the proposal made by Chris last night. Amy gets happy for her younger sister and suggests they not confront their psycho father. Sarah feels pity for her mother, who has been tolerating that abusive man for many years. Sarah is just waiting for her 18th birthday, and then she will move out. Irene enters the room and is asked about her plans after leaving the house. Amy and Irene also want a free life for Sarah. Sarah says that she will start in Florida and travel the world while working. Irene encourages her by giving instructions, including sending letters often and paying visits when possible. It seems that Irene and her daughters are teaming up against Don. Don overheard the whole conversation from outside the door. Three months later, Sarah is talking on the phone with Chris in the backyard and eagerly waiting for her birthday. Irene steps in to inform me that she's going to market. Irene is wondering what her husband has been doing in the basement for the whole day but couldn't take it seriously. Irene asked Sarah if she wanted to come along, but Sarah preferred to stay at home. When Irene leaves, Don calls Sarah to help him take some stuff to the basement. Sarah walks down the stairs with Don, carrying the box. She saw a secret room in the basement behind the bookshelf that is password protected. Don explains that this bomb shelter was built by the previous owner of the house, and he made some improvements. This room contains nothing except walls and a floor. The room has no window, it works on an electric ventilation system. Don locked Sarah in the basement to give her punishment for not obeying him. Sarah begged Don to let her go out, but he was determined to stick to his plan. If someone enters the wrong code three times, power will shut down, as will the ventilation system in the room. Sarah screams for help, but no one hears her because the room is soundproof. Sarah examines the space, there is only one sink and shower. She opens that box and is surprised to see her clothes and essentials, including a torchlight, canned food, etc. Sarah yells to seek help, but her father drags the bookshelf to close the door on the bombshell. Sarah tried to configure the password, but after three failed attempts, the light shuts down. Sarah goes near the ventilation vent and screams for help. Don, who was already outside, covered the vent so no one could hear her voice and moved peacefully upstairs. As the day passes, Irene is worried about Sarah. Amy said Sarah must be safe at her friend's house, but Irene had already made phone calls to Sarah's friends. Don tells Sarah that she will come home the following morning and pretends to know nothing about her. But Irene wants to call the police and file the missing report. Irene instructs Amy to call Chris and inquire about Sarah. 
The day passed, and Sarah was still locked in the bomb shelter. She wanders here and there in the room to escape. She also tried to open the lock until the lights shut down. Sarah uses pots to piss in and takes every opportunity to scream for help. On day four, Don finally decides to visit her. When Don opens the door, Sarah attacks him and runs out of the bombshell. But there is another door outside that is also password protected. Don grips her hair and drags her inside to beat her a lot. Sarah asked her father why he was doing this to her. Don tells her that she will earn her privileges and is being punished for her disrespectful behavior. He pushed Sarah against the door and raped her. Don leaves Sarah in a terrible condition. The cops arrive to investigate Sarah's missing case. According to the officer, she can go wherever she wants now that she is 18. Irene says that she cannot leave home without saying goodbye. Also, she has not celebrated her 18th birthday yet. The officer inquired as to whether she had a boyfriend. Amy tells that Chris has also not seen Sarah. When Amy walks away, Don claims that she has been planning to sneak out for a long time. According to Don, Sarah's travel bag and some essentials are missing. He asked Irene to tell the officer about her plans for Florida, but Irene explains that nothing in Sarah's childhood plan was serious. The officer informs the parents that as long as the strings are not connected to someone, he can only file the missing report and leave. Sarah is trapped inside the bomb shelter as a caged animal. On day seven, in the darkness, she is living with the hope of getting freedom one day and always thinking about her boyfriend, Chris. One day, Chris visits Sarah's house to check if she's come back. Don faked a love story about Sarah and a random neighborhood boy named Steve. Don tells Chris that they both made their way to Florida to start a new life, and Sarah's working as a waitress there. Chris gets upset after knowing this and leaves. On day 21, Don again visits Sarah downstairs. This time Don brings a birthday cake with a red dress. Don asks her to put it on and asks her to earn something. Sarah demands to get out of prison, Don believes that it's too early to make a big wish like this. She asked for television to kill the boredom, but Don declined. Sarah demands a clock, as it is too frustrating to chase the time in the basement. Don agrees. Don instructs her to come closer and call him Don instead of Dad. Sarah earned the clock after pleasing the monster. On the 38th day, Sarah received some canned food, which gave her the idea to attack Don. She made a weapon with a can. When Don arrives, Sarah is already dressed for him. As Don gets comes near her, she tries to attack him. But Don is smart enough to defend himself from Sarah. He threw Sarah on the floor and kicked her arm brutally. In the aftermath of her attack, the sick man again raped his daughter to teach her a lesson. In the next scene, a year has passed and Sarah is pregnant with Don's child. She was cleaning the room when her water bag broke. She gives birth to a baby girl alone, without any medical care. Sarah gave her the name Marie. Don also kept Marie in prison to hide his filthy deeds from the world. After four years in prison in a bomb shelter, Sarah gets pregnant again. Sarah is worried about raising another baby in the basement, she requested that Don let them out of the basement now. Don gets angry and leaves. He joins Amy and Irene upstairs for a Christmas dinner. Amy congratulates her father, as he recently got his promotion. Irene asked Don to hire a private investigator for Sarah. Don gets angry as Irene has already spent $5,000 in Florida to search for Sarah. Irene says that she will not stop searching for her daughter, no matter how much it costs. Don brings the television to Sarah and Marie as a Christmas present. Sarah tells Marie that now she can see the whole world. Sarah gives birth to a baby boy this time and names him Michael. Sarah is surviving with her two children. Marie has a breathing problem, she often gets asthma attacks, but Don never provides her with medical assistance. In year seven, Marie gets attacked again. Sarah asked Don to bring medicine, and he came up with some adult medicine. Sarah gets furious, as the overdose on a six-year-old child could have killed her. Don doesn't bother and tells Sarah that Irene has dealt with Sarah and Amy's illnesses several times. Sarah used to tell a story to Marie and Michael about a fairy princess and her evil father, who chopped off her wings to separate her from Prince Christopher. 
One day, Chris visits Sarah's house to hear anything about her. He meets Amy there and realizes that Don has made up a running story about Sarah and Steve. Don's behavior casts doubt on Amy. She tells Chris that her father is an abusive man, as he used to beat her mother, and she ended up in the hospital many times. Amy believes that Don has done something wrong to Sarah. When Irene learned about Steve's story, she confronted her husband and yelled at him. Amy stole the keys from the basement and went to find her sister while they were both arguing. Sarah was giving birth to her third baby. Don arrives and scolds Amy for searching in the basement. Sarah gives birth to a baby boy and names him Thomas. Sarah convinced Don to take him upstairs as there isn't enough room for three kids. Don realizes this and puts him on the porch with a note from Sarah. Irene gets happy to see her grandchild and doesn't notice the small note hidden in the bassinet. Don takes up the note, which states that Sarah is being held captive in the basement. He goes downstairs and rapes her again as punishment. In the 14th grade, Sarah notices that Don is putting his bad eyes on Marie. Sarah warned him to stay away from Marie, but Don gets angry at Sarah and shuts down the light. When the ventilation system stopped working, Marie couldn't breathe. Sarah sits with her near the vent and gives her hope of getting a better life one day. Sarah became pregnant for the second time in her 17th year in the basement. It is raining heavily. Thomas has grown up tall and is very close to Irene. Thomas is told by Irene that he's more like Sarah. Sarah and her kids notice water dripping from the ceiling. Sarah, pregnant, steps onto the table and digs at the ceiling with a spoon. Sarah flashes the torch to send a signal for help. One of their neighbors notices the light and rings the bell of their house. Don learned that Sarah had done something, so he furiously went down and beat pregnant Sarah brutally. Michael and Marie rescue their mother. Sarah has lost her baby and gets depressed. After 18 years in the basement, Sarah and her children are facing social anxiety. The children demand to be let out and live a normal life like Thomas. Don tries to turn the children against Sarah. But Sarah realizes that the children are mature enough to hear the truth about Don. She tells Marie and Michael the truth about Don, how he kept his daughter in prison for years and abused her to give birth to children. The kids are overwhelmed, and the next time Don comes downstairs, Michael attacks him out of anger but is stopped by Sarah. Don again shuts down the light and leaves. Don lost his job and was facing financial crises, so he decided to get rid of Sarah and the children. He connects a vent tube to his car's exhaust to kill them through suffocation, but Thomas arrives at the garage and he drops the idea. At 20 years, Marie had a severe asthma attack and Sarah begged Don to take her to the hospital. She even calls him dad to melt his heart. He agrees but keeps Michael in the basement so that Sarah will stay quiet. It is the same scene we saw at the start of the movie. Don and Sarah were on their way to the hospital. Marie stopped breathing, but doctors saved her. Sarah made her way to get help while Don was busy at reception. Sarah tells the doctor everything. The police arrested Don and rescued Michael. The family is horrified to learn the truth about Don, who locked up his daughter for 20 years and abused her physically. In the ending scene of the movie, Kids are playing together in the garden, and Chris shows up to take Sarah out. Sarah says there wasn't even a single day when she couldn't imagine Chris. Chris apologizes for believing Don's fake story, and they both go on the ride happily.